Hello everyone and welcome to this Three Colors Up. In this one we're going to be tackling the STRV-103C, commonly known as the S-Tank for the Swedish forces for World War III Team Yankee. As always we're going to be keeping the scheme fairly simple, so the majority of the work goes into the camouflage because we're going the four-tone camouflage. Uh, a little touch of weathering but not really much else. We want to make sure that we've spent our time well with the camouflage and make everything else a little bit quicker uh, straight after that basically because we want the tank to be done and still have that really nice four-tone scheme. So S-Tanks are probably going to be one of the most iconic uh, vehicles in the game, probably alongside the likes of Centurion and uh, Chieftain I think really, uh, apart from the, the Russian built stuff as well, T-72s, T-55s. This Cold War period really has some of the, the oddities of Cold War starting to come into the game now as well because the S-Tank is really a vehicle that had a lot of potential behind it but ended up being too expensive for the, the Swedish forces to really sort of maintain and keep uh, as well as it not quite fitting with their doctrine uh, but they were definitely trying and it was a very innovative design at its time. Uh, we're only starting to see similar designs coming out now with uh, some of the more foreign designs like the South Korean, the Black Panther, which has that hydraulic, that hydropneumatic suspension that can adjust itself depending on its terrain. The S-Tank obviously uses that to elevate and depress the gun, uh, as well as just be really cool, really, really cool. Um, what other tank gibberish have I got on S-Tank? It's the first tank, as far as I'm aware, it's the first armored fighting vehicle with a turbine engine, a gas turbine engine. It also had a backup uh, diesel engine, uh, which helped start the turbine as well as provide power to the vehicle when the turbine was switched off. For example, if the tank was in a fighting position, it would run the diesel just to keep the hydraulics and stuff going for it to be able to move and shift a little bit. Obviously not enough to really drive the tank that far or that fast. It needed the turbine for that. So a very unique, I'm not going to call it odd, it's just a very unique design based on the idea of get into a firing position, engage at long range and Hopefully nothing's going to get too close to you, otherwise you're in a bit of trouble. Um, we talk about that more as well in the videos that we're doing for uh, the Nordic Forces book for Team Yankee as well. So do check out some of those and um, see what you think of it all. Anyway, I'm not going to waffle too much. There's plenty of videos and online resources for you if you want to look into the, the S-Tank a little bit further. Personally recommend uh, Inside the Chieftain's Hatch on S-Tank. That's a two-part video series very good indeed. Um, gives you a good idea of the size of the vehicle as well as what it was meant to do. Anyway, let's get down to the table and let's paint our S-Tank. So here we have our STRV-103C and we have it primed. Now this time I've actually airbrush primed uh, my vehicle. So let me just grab what I've used. So I've used uh, AK Interactive's black primer. This is third generation acrylic. This is for primarily for airbrushing. So I've used this alongside their thinner, which is the corresponding uh, new version or the newest version of their thinner. Just a few drops of that and a few drops of the primer into my airbrush and we get a really nice smooth finish. So we're going to be moving on to our base coat and our base coat is going to be Vallejo model color Luftwaffe camo green a nice deep base green that uh, is going to be our base color. This again is going to be through the airbrush, thinned, uh, two parts paint, uh, one part thinner and one part flow improver just to make sure that it works. So let's try it out. Seems to be fine. And it's just going to be a case of giving the entire vehicle a coat of this. So with our base green down, it's time to start on some camouflage and a couple of little detail areas. So the color we're going to be using for this is Vallejo model color black gray. And this is going to be the first color for our camouflage, as well as a couple of areas that are basically black. So for starters here, I will just get my brush ready. 
just make sure I've got enough on the brush. We're going to paint in this area here in black because this is a rubber mat. I believe it's a rubber mat. I've been told it's a rubber mat. I see pictures of it being a rubber mat, so which means I'm probably wrong. But the pictures I've seen of an STRV or an S tank have this painted in or this color like this. So we'll just go for it. And we'll do that on both sides. Then we're going to start the camouflage. Now the camouflage for the Swedish forces is a little unusual. It's, it's a very nice scheme, but it's quite unusual. So we're going to start with the black and what we want to do is start drawing straight lines at different angles, something like that there. And then to correspond it, we're going to go up, in, and up at an angle. Taking that over the top of the vehicle, we want to go across and then we'll do a long line here, carry that up and then across like that and then sort of join it. We'll send it down a little bit, send that out a little bit more that way, and then join it in sort of a point. So we're gonna to have to do that over the whole vehicle. It'll make more sense once I've got all of it down and you'll start to see what it what I mean. So I'm gonna continue on with that, paint in these, these other details, and then when we come back, I'll show you what I mean with all these strange lines and angles that are going on. With our grey, black down and dry, we can now see a little bit of what the, the idea behind this camouflage is, where we have all these sort of narrow-ish kind of dark patches that um, sort of have the, the sort of angular look to them. Now, it's not an exact science. It, it Well, it kind of is an exact science with the Swedish camo because it is a very particular design and very much a break from the, the NATO three-tone or the British two-tone, that sort of thing. And um, we have to move on now to our next color. And our next color, we're gonna be using Vallejo model color flat green. Um, I'm more or less following what's in the Nordic book uh, for the colors they've chosen. And for the lighter green, they choose a, um, is it a flat olive? This is the closest color I have to that. So we're gonna be using that. And it is, it pretty much works out at the basically the same color. It's maybe a touch brighter than the recommended one. Um, but to look at the ethos or the thinking behind this camouflage, we now have to talk about how the green is applied. So this green hugs the black, but it hugs the black at a different angle, a different angle of attack from most of the lines. It's also a little bit broader. So for example, I want to go along this line here and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to paint the outer stripe first, which is going to be here. And what I'm going to do is carry it on down without changing angle here. On the way up, we're going to keep that angle. And then I think I'm going to give it quite a sharp, almost a 90 degree there. And then carry it across here and then probably join it up with the black there, and then just fill in this entire area. So this is kind of, the, the, the black always seems to be very narrow. Then this green is a little bit broader, but runs at different angles. Then we have the next color after that, which is a brown, and that's going to do something different again on top of that. So we'll carry on with this green, and it's, it's really easier to show than it is to explain. I've had to look at a load of pictures to sort of get the, the basic idea down pat and um, I think I've kind of got it for the most part but I'm sure there's areas that I'll get it wrong. But because this green sort of hugs that black you can afford to be a little bit messier with the black and then tidy those lines up with this lighter green. So we're going to carry on with the green and then when we come back we can discuss what that looks like and where we're going to move on to. So with our flat green down, let's have a look at what the scheme looks like now. And you can sort of see where we're going 
with that green sort of hugging the black. Um, a larger patch over the front there, but I don't think that's too bad. Um, not, nothing really to talk about in the front at all. And just trying to pick it out wherever we can. So we're on to the final color of the camouflage. And for that, we're going to be using Vallejo model color again, beige brown. This is the recommended color, thankfully. So we're not going to be fighting uh, with anything strange on this color. This is also the smallest uh, color, sort of a patchwork of little geometric shapes. So again, get our brown here. And sort of working off the reference vehicle that I have pictures of, it's kind of, again, sort of taking a small area, say up here, and then just doing sort of a patch Probably even that is a little bit too big, but because we're at 15 mil, I think we can afford to be a little bit more uh, creative license on it. So that's kind of the size we're aiming for. So we'll tidy that up a little bit as well, but that's more or less what we're doing. So for example, we'll take another patch. I think we'll go up here and we'll do just a, a small shape coming off the side here running down to here and just rejoining that black sort of like that there's really not much else to the swedish camouflage so we'll just push on with this brown and we'll show you what it's all like after that so that has completed our camouflage and I think that is looking pretty sharp, looking pretty nice. Not too much of any one color, it's all quite a nice mixture of things. And I think honestly that's enough of the complicated part of this scheme because we're going to keep it simple, he says. We're going to keep it simple enough now that we have the camouflage down and we can just finish the vehicle off with just a few more steps just to detail it up a little bit and then we can weather all down and make it look amazing. So the next color we're going to be going for is Vallejo uh, Dark Mud. And this is going to be for the base coat of our tracks. So that is really watery for whatever reason. Oh no, I think we need to shake that a bit more. <laughs> That's very watery. <laughs> That's a little less watery, not much. So as always, as a base coat to something, we're just gonna carefully paint it in on our tracks, try and avoid the wheels as much as possible. And after that, I am going to go back in with our black gray and just sort of touch in some of the rubber pads on the track here as well. It's not necessary, but I feel like it's something that should be there. So I want to do that. I'm also going to probably do that on the machine gun on top as well, just to keep our, um, our paints used list a little shorter than usual. Uh, we do have some AK products we're going to be applying as well. So we'll do that on the machine gun, on the tracks. And uh, when we come back, we should be in a position, uh, hopefully, to do some weathering. I think, yeah, I think we're going to be able to do some weathering once we come back. With our tracks painted, our little track pads painted, the machine gun on top, also the periscopes and the exhaust at the back, all now have uh, black paint. I actually went back to the black primer uh, to paint those in. It just stands out a little bit better than just the, the black grey. Keeps the black grey tied into that camouflage. Now we're going to move on to the fun part, which is our washes, our weathering washes. So the first one we're going to do is our AK Interactive Dark Brown. Now I'm doing this because in my last video where I was doing the um, Bold Action Sherman, I had a comment where someone was asking, can I use this in small scale? So we're going to do it in small scale. So we're going to give that pot a little shake and we're going to crack it up and set it over there. Now I'm going to use an old dry brush to apply this, an old rack GW one, and dip that in. As you can see, that's quite heavy at the minute. So what I'm going to do is take some of my odorless thinner, crack that open, put that to the side as well. As you can see, I've put down a piece of plastic here. This is just a piece of plastic card I've used. And what we're going to do is thin this out a little bit. 
because we don't want it to be too overbearing on the model. Now it's just going to be a case of sort of just letting the wash move into all the panel lines and all the, the details. And what I would normally do, as you've seen on some of my other painting videos, I would completely coat the model in this and then wipe it back. But because we're playing with small detail and small models, it's better and more efficient to just thin it down and just let the capillary action of the enamel uh, oil just work in to the details on the model. So we're going to put away our dark brown and we're going to try using something a little bit different. So this time, instead of going with what I did last time, which was the dust and dirt deposits, I'm going to go for AK's newer product, which is specifically made for Wargame. This is a liquid pigment. So it's kind of pigment powder already in Fixer. So I haven't tried this yet. I haven't even opened this bottle. Uh, this one is the medium earth and we're going to be giving that a go just to see what happens. I think this, this should be quite interesting because this is, as I said, already has the fixer in it and it smells quite um, like it's going to dry real fast. So let's put a bit of that on the table there and see what that looks like. Now, let's just work it onto our lower area here get it into the spaces around the wheels and on the track and we will play with it up onto the hull a little bit as well. I just want to see what this will do because it seems it seemed interesting enough for me to go ahead and buy a part of it and see what it would do. Maybe the medium earth isn't quite the best one for a vehicle like this but it seems to be okay. A bit more there. Go quite heavy on the wheels. Stipple it along the lower hull there just to see what happens. And then on the front, again, we'll go quite heavy. I think as well, maybe just step a little bit onto the upper parts of the vehicle. So in theory, this stuff is meant to dry <clears throat> with a, a sort of a matte finish, but I think because we're mixing it with some of the enamel, I don't think it's going to do that. But we'll soon find out. So that's that one assuming that's going to wash in the same way. So we'll move that to the side. And then our final one, we're going to take another liquid pigment. This is light rust dust, rusty, rusty dust. More because we're going to use this as an experiment more than anything else. And we're going to take this rusty dust. And I'm going to take a somewhat smaller brush. And we're going to take our exhaust and just run it along our exhaust. Just to give that a bit of a standout look to it. Be curious to see how this turns out. Might have gone a bit over the top there. However, that really is all I want to do to the vehicle. So we're going to let all this dry, let it all settle down. Once it's settled, I'm going to give the model a matte varnish and then we'll see what our completed S-Tank looks like. With our liquid pigments and our washes dry and an application of matte varnish, our Strudswagen 103C or S-Tank is now finished. And I think that has turned out all right. I think from both angles, this looks like a vehicle that's gonna be quite charming on the table. Uh, there is obviously a few, well, there is a few steps I would like to increase a little bit. If you feel like going at that little extra step, I think a little bit of a highlight, some sort of small dry brush maybe of um, Vallejo Buff or something like that, just to dusty up, just to accentuate that dust a little bit and highlight the vehicle a bit more. Other than that, I kind of like that dull, not heavily used look about the vehicle. I think when you see a bunch of these uh, on a table, I think they're going to look 
quite good. Um, another thing I might have changed has gone a little bit heavier on the dark, uh, the dark brown wash, maybe just to increase the panel lining a little bit more. But in general, I think we've got a pretty solid vehicle for our Swedish forces. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.